Okay, welcome to the channel. I'm gonna teach you guys how to mix concrete. It's amazing what it's like online. You just can't find anything that will tell you how to simply mix concrete, especially the 60 pound bags, which is what I use. It's what you should use too. Because who wants to be hauling 80 pound bags around? What do, they, what do they think people like these homeowners are? Like, I mean, I'm probably stronger than any of you. No offense, but I probably am. And, uh, it's a, it's a lot for me to pick an 80 pound bag up, you know? So this 60 pound bag, 60 pound bags, I'm using this quick creek, high strength mixer, you know? I mean, sure, I can lift an 80, no problem. I can lift 120, I can lift a 200. But do I want to? No, get yourself 60 pound bags. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mix some concrete here. I'm gonna show you how to do it because there's no information online about how to mix a 60 pound bag of concrete. They, they're telling you, Okay, you're going to use, you know, between this much and this much water. No, I'm going to tell you exactly how much water you're going to use. It's going to make it real simple per bag. I'm going to tell you when to put it in so you'll be all set. All right, so first thing we're going to do for each bag, you're going to use 11 and a half cups of water. If you don't take anything else away from this video, that's what you're going to use. 11 and a half cups of water per bag. You can wave goodbye now, but... Maybe you don't want a bunch of concrete stuck inside your mixer. Like maybe you don't want that dry stuff stuck all over the back. So maybe you want to stay tuned for a little longer here and, and see how I, I'm doing it. So first thing we're going to do, since we're using eight and a half, since we're using 11 and a half cups per, uh, per bag. So I'm going to measure out, I'm going to measure out eight cups here. That's what my, measurer gives you do eight cups and just pour eight cups right into your thing like that okay just pour eight cups and then go nine and a half that's what you want nine and a half right off the bat see how we're doing here Okay, so put nine and a half cups into your thing right away. Oh, and before you start, before you start your job, wet your mixer down and pour the water out of your mixer because your mixer is all dry. So it's going to take some of the water that you use. So before you start anything, wet your mixer. So we've got nine and a half cups of water in there now. So I'm going to start our mixer. Now I've actually, I've actually already mixed a little before I started this. Um, I'm used to actually mixing with uh, a 3 2 1 mixture where I take three buckets of gravel, two buckets of sand, and one bucket of uh, Portland cement. And uh, don't do that. Mix these, get the quick creep, don't mix your own concrete, don't be a hero. Do it once, but by the time you move, you have it all moved in and all that, that's really not what these mixers are for, really. This is a homeowner mixer, and by the way, I'm using this Cushlin. I think it's a 600 dB or something, and I'm not really that crazy about it for one reason, is that it's too low. And I thought I was gonna be pouring right into my forms, and you're, not, you're gonna run into a lot of situations where you're not gonna be able to pour into forms, directly into forms. You think you're gonna pour right out of the mixer into your forms, and that's why you're going to buy the low one, but it's not going to work out that way. So you're going to end up doing what I have to do with this thing, which is hand shoveling all this, all the concrete into the wheelbarrow and then taking it out of the wheelbarrow again. So my advice is if you haven't gotten a mixer yet, get yourself a tall one. So we got nine and a half, uh, nine and a half cups in there. There's the dog behind. I don't know if you can see Luna back there. Hi Luna. She's back there. So uh, yeah, let's put a uh, let's put a bag of this port on support here. A bag of this concrete mix in. You're gonna need some rubber gloves. Make sure you have rubber gloves. Don't go handling this concrete without rubber gloves. It's really very tough on your skin. Uh, I had a guy come over one time to advise me on uh, on concrete, and I shook his hand, and I felt like I was shaking hands with a mummy. You never saw a hand like this in your life. 
it was just incredible. Looking for my goggles, actually, because you really don't want this dust blown up in your eye. And I got, I got a, uh, I was in sort of an apocalyptic sort of a thing, and my eye, you know, I ended up with sort of this like apocalypse eye. This is the kind of, kind of living an apocalypse kind of lifestyle around here, actually. So, uh, anyway, I don't want to get anything in my eye, and you shouldn't want to get anything in yours either, so. Uh, this is, there's a lime and all kinds of some nasty chemicals here that can be pretty caustic. So let's get some goggles on here. I'm, I'm going to go find mine real quick. Okay, I've got some goggles on, so we got nine and a half cups of water in here. You're gonna put nine and a half cups of water in your in your uh, in your mixer, and take yourself a nice blade and cut your bag of concrete open. And kind of don't go too crazy pulling in there. Just kind of go in. Half a bag. You know, give it a few seconds. The one thing you don't want to have happen is you don't want to uh, have that dry concrete stuck on the back of your mixer. That's a nightmare. So you want that nine and a half cups in there right off the bat. And that's uh that's got it pretty soft in there already. I can see that I don't have a bunch of dry material on the back of my back of my mixer. That's the worst thing. You gotta get in there with your hands and the shovel while the thing's turning. And that's dangerous. So you don't want to do that. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other two cups in here right now then. You're better off to put your liquids in. Go heavy on putting the liquids in first out of the dry the the concrete let's see is that two cups yep so we have a full 11 and a half cups in there now and there's a real good chance that I'm not going to have everything stick into the back like my, my goal is not to plaster the inside of my mixer I don't know where these these companies that make the concrete and all these advisors online are telling you how to, how to mix your concrete and add a little bit of water here and there and get the thing wet in there soon so your concrete is not stuck to the back wall. All right, so we'll add, we'll add the rest of this bag. Go kind of slow. As I can see that that back wall is a little dry right now. But it's moistening up. I've had I've had mixes where where I've where, where I was mixing by hand with the gravel and the sand and uh, and the Portland cement and just had had one one load take an hour for me to mix it. It's just ridiculous. Go heavy on the water. I don't mean like don't go over 11 and a half cups to one of these bags. But for gosh sakes, use 11 and a half cups. They're like, well, you could need some between something. So they give me the, the instructions on the bag say, you know, hey, you're going to need somewhere between uh, two quarts, but not a, no more than a maximum of three and a half quarts. Like, what are they talking about? Like, if this stuff is moist when you when you receive it, then it's junk, right? So it's all pretty much got the same moisture content. So why would it not always have the same the same water that you mix into it? And if you're telling me about critical applications and such, I'm pouring footings for a house right now. So if, you, if your application, I don't know, maybe you're building a nuclear power plant or something like that, and you need to pay a little bit more attention to your water mix ratio. Otherwise, just forget all this stuff. Do it the way I said, I'm telling you. 11 and a half cups. We'll put the rest of this in there. And 
And then, like all things that you mix, whether you're mixing epoxy or concrete or whatever, mixing a small amount of it is always a little trickier than mixing a little bit larger amount because the properties will tend to kind of even out. Like in epoxy, for example, if you're going to mix, uh, you know, uh, if you're going to mix enough epoxy to uh, for for a thimble full size job, you don't mix half a thimble of epoxy resin and half a, you know half a, whatever the the corresponding uh, amount of hardener is to make a thimble full. Like you go overboard so that you even out the mix. And this concrete kind of behaves the same way from a water standpoint. It's not as if you're going to get the water wrong, but from the standpoint of uh, being easy to work with so so that you have like uh, so, that, so that like one 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 bag of this concrete it's kind of sticking to the back right now but once it what a time I'm gonna mix three okay so it's dry back in here right now I'm seeing dry material I'm reaching in there with my hand okay so we got to get rid of that get in there with our hand which I, I don't like doing that Okay, but since we're gonna mix, since we're gonna mix uh, three bags up here, that's 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 exactly what I'm talking about. As far as it's a little easier when you're mixing more than one bag. Hey, Wyatt Luna's coming in. Oh, she's going up on my bed. She might take a nap on my bed. Go on, Luna, go on up there. She can't make it. <laughs> she's a puppy. Put her on my bed if you want. What she got? She just ate something. Okay, so here's the advantage, like I'm telling you. Here, come on out here, Wyatt, and bring Luna out here and say hi. Come back here. This is my son, Wyatt, hi. and our new dog, Luna. Come on this way a little more so they can make sure they see you. And Millie's down here. I got concrete hands. Here, put Luna down and pick Millie up. And this is Millie. So, uh, Wyatt... Wyatt's actually, he can testify that mixing all that concrete by hand where you do it by the, by the buckets, like, he was ready to kill me. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you don't really know until you try something for the first time. Well, anyway, don't do that. But anyway, so what, like I was telling you, thanks Wyatt. Sure. So, like I was telling you, like the advantage of mixing up three bags is okay, it's a little dry in there now, but look at this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead here. Put another eight cups in there. For my next for my next batch, for the first part of my next batch. Well look at that. There's eight. Now let's see a stick to the back wall. See that's that's the advantage of mixing a little bit more. Now it's just like goo in there. And the other bags I put in there, they're gonna be less likely to stick to the back wall when I do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put all eleven. Since I'm mixing three bags, 11 and a half cups, so that's eight. And by the way, really it's better off if you're writing this stuff down. Like, marking down how many bags you put and how much water you put, like for each bag, like keeping track. Because... You don't want to be leaving ingredients out or... Actually, this is pretty simple. We're used to mixing the concrete with individual components. So there we are. So that's all the water for the next for the next bag. Man, that's just it. Just looks like uh, it's just it's just goo in there. It's like a milkshake. So what what a nice situation to be able to put your next bag into that. And it's much less likely to stick on the uh, on the back wall of the mixer. So we're going to cut our next bag open here. Really 
better off to dump a half a bag in at a time, even if it's that wet. Probably should wear a respirator too. Because it does, it loads it uh, from the standpoint of that water absorption. Like there's some, I can see some of that dry mix sticking on the back wall in there, but it'll come off now. There's enough water in there. But you're better off not to pour the whole bag in there and then have it stick to the back wall. And then it kind of acts almost like a buffer where you can't get through it. You pour water against it, it's almost like it builds like a shell on it. So that's where you're better off to put a little bit, a little bit of the concrete in at a time. Don't be in a hurry when you do this stuff. Looking pretty good in there. Here we go with the rest of this bag. I like to go a half of a half. Got a quarter, a little less than a quarter of a bag here. Kind of go slow on it. And I'll pour the rest of it here. And then, hey, we're going to pour another one, so why not make it easy again, like I'm saying. Here goes another eight cups. Just, yeah. Nice and easy. So there's eight cups. Everything comes right off the wall. So, oh yeah, I can see there's some dry material in there. Look at that, so it's loosening up that dry material in the back. So that was eight, so I got another, uh, I've got another three and a half cups. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. Always go on, from the standpoint of always putting more liquid in first than you need. Like this thing where you can put the liquid in on top, I don't know if I'd buy it so much. Just be careful. The secret to, to this stuff is, is to add slowly. I'm probably not adding as slowly as I should. But I'm adding fairly slowly. No, it's pretty, it's pretty loose in there. So, there's that. It's all set up for that last bag. There we go. Nice and slow. A little bit of time here, just kind of dribbling it in. These mixers, they lead you to believe that like you're going to be like a cement truck. They're really touchy as far as having making your day a nightmare or a pleasant experience. Now it's going to be a heck of a lot easier than a wheelbarrow, but it can be pretty tough if you go overboard like with the speed that you're adding these ingredients. first, but that's uh, 11 and a half cups, you're going to be okay. So, all right, so over and out here. 